Hi guys, if you've been keeping up with my channel lately, you've noticed that the past two months or so have been more fruitful as far as collecting than the past two years put together. It's just been insane. And throughout all this, I've had a bunch of discussions and comments of people talking about um, how a lot of this came to be, collecting in general. So I decided to put up my top five suggestions, kind of rules for collecting on the cheap. Number one is patience pays off. There's so many people I talk to that just are flabbergasted when they see the hundreds and hundreds of games and laser discs and movie collections in every odd format and close to 3,000 books, you know, and, and manga all over the place, and wondering how the heck can you afford that? How do you do this? And the majority of the time, those are the people that are going out and they really want to play this one game. So they go and they search for it. If it's a new release, they go right away, right as it comes out, and spend $60, and then buy the DLC as it comes out and end up spending $80, $90 on one game or it's an older game so they go right on eBay and like I really want that game and they go and drop like $200 and how we're able to get so much stuff is I never do either of those. Patience pays off no matter how much you want to watch something, read something, play something eventually you will come across it in some form that's a lot cheaper than just running out and getting it whenever you want it. And I look at those people and say you know, five minutes ago you were talking about your gigantic backlog of games and movies you've never seen, books you've always wanted to read. There's a time and a place for everything and you have to get rid of that mentality of I have to have everything now. A lot of those uh, games coming out today, you wait a year or two and those 80 bucks you spent on the game and the DLC, you can now get in a complete package for, you know, $10, $15 sitting on a store shelf. So. It's worth waiting. A lot of the more expensive games in my collection, um, I actually went through a period where a lot of my collection went out. I was desperate for money, moving around from state to state, and a lot of it went away over the years. So I don't have a lot from when things first came out, but how I've regained a lot of the more expensive games in my collection is just being patient and eventually finding them at you know, a goodwill or getting through a lot or a good deal with some people, uh, getting as a gift, that type of thing, slowly but surely you'll find those things and you have so much to do in the meantime. There is no hurry, there is no rush. Be patient and a lot of things will come to you. But while you are actively looking for those things, keep in mind rule number two, which specifically goes for things like eBay, throw a wide net and look for mistakes. I have never once gone on eBay, unless it's like a specific Christmas gift for somebody, but for myself, for collecting, I never go on looking for a specific item. I never ever do that. You will end up spending a premium or get caught in like a bidding war, and I really, really want that and end up paying so much more than you intended to. I go on eBay the beginning of every month and spread across tons of different things, laser discs, books, video games of all types, um, no matter what it is, I've usually bid on about 10 different things. And I bid far less than what they're worth, very, very low. Just go around and look for general things that you're interested in, never look for anything specific, look at just general categories and take some time. Whenever you have time off instead of watching TV, occasionally I'll do that at the beginning of every month. And most of the time, I don't win anything for months upon months upon months, because I'll go in and bid $5, $10 on something and just leave that as my max bid and leave it alone, check at the end of the month, see if I won anything. But every once in a while, you end up getting about 50 bucks worth of laser discs for $5 and plus shipping, or end up getting a whole bunch of, a whole stack of like PC Engine games about a year ago for the price of one of those games, that type of thing. You don't win very frequently that way, but when you do, you win big. And it's really just not looking for anything specific, just looking in general. And look for mistakes, look for things that are mislabeled, look for things that are in the wrong category that will sometimes get kind of buried in searches and people will tend not to find them. And that's part of how you find them is by just searching general categories and looking around and very low ball bidding. That's really how I find things. Again, patience and persistence and really just kind of throwing that wide net and not looking for very specific things. Eventually over time those specific things you're looking for will come to you, just you can't really choose the order. That's life. Eventually you get stuff and part of how you go around doing things like that leads me into what's probably the most important thing. Number three, 
Knowledge is power. As with everything else in life, the more you know, the more tools you have, the more weapons you have in your arsenal to find things, figure out what things are worth, how to spot, not just things like uh, fakes versus real and like repo, how to know when you're getting a good deal, how to know what something is, how even if it's something that you don't want that you can resell or trade for something you want, knowledge is power, knowing as much as possible and have fun doing it. That's probably the number one thing I do with uh, YouTube. I love to watch people and learn about their passions, learn about collecting, learn about the history of different things, realizing, you know, going to a goodwill. And when I found my second, you know, CED player, all these people that were professional, you know, eBay sellers, like well, to us, you know, we don't, we're, it's more like a hobby type thing. Uh, but these people, that's their full time job, were passing up on, there were two, you know, CD, CED players, one of them completely functional, and I got one for less than $5. And in that shape, and especially shipping to you, you could spend one, $200 to, to, in a working condition like that and passing it up because they didn't know what it was. And that's generally how I swoop in and get things, is having a superior knowledge in certain areas and really trying over the years to grow that knowledge, moving more into books, moving more into uh, laser discs and retro media, like CDs and stuff like that, um, even like VHD, whatever. Knowledge is power. If you have a particular interest in something, if you're a video game collector, if you're a book collector, if you are a media collector, uh, like laser discs, DVDs, whatever, knowing what's out there, knowing what things are worth, knowing what works with what, Understanding highs and lows in markets is also something that's really important. Just a quick example of right now the 360, PS3, and the Wii, a lot of stuff, particularly the more common titles, are as cheap as they're ever going to be right now, absolutely. We're starting to see though eventually those first couple casualties of things becoming collector's items. I thoroughly think the Wii, because it's so underappreciated, just kind of thought of as that secondary console with um, all that shovelware a lot of the unique and interesting and very creative exclusives for that system are going to start shooting up in price. It's going to be a lot like Dreamcast collecting, North American Saturn collecting, GameCube collecting, where it's hard to find these certain titles because they didn't have huge print runs and people are going back and appreciating it more than they did during its heyday. A good example is Fragile Dreams. I was really happy I grabbed that for somewhere around like $10 a couple of years ago because now it's going for 50, 60, 70, I've seen it over $80 for the North American copy of that. It's one of the first casualties of the Wii that people are going back to and it's a very interesting and intriguing classic. I did a review um, on it, probably one of my favorite ones I ever did, so go check that out. Um, put the you know little link up here and down in the description. Uh, but that's another thing is knowing when things are going to be at their high point or their low point, when you shouldn't hold, you know, collect certain systems, when you should hold off until you think the market's going to come down, that type of thing. Really knowing that can save you a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of aggravation. Even knowing about obscure things you don't have an interest in, knowledge is power and you'll be able to use that when you are spreading that wide net and searching and even going to thrift stores and stuff, knowing what things are can be powerful not only in getting things for a good deal and knowing they're a good deal, but finding things that maybe don't personally interest you that you can then use to get things that do interest you. And that moves me into number four, which is share your passions and understand the passions of others. How I got a lot of stuff recently, getting you know big boxes of CEDs and laser discs and all kinds of stuff, has mostly been from other people. Because if you share your passions and other people are out there looking for stuff and they happen to stumble upon the random thing at a thrift store or whatever, and they know, man, I, I, that person's really into that. And my you know stepsister Rachel happened to be out and she ran into a CED. She's like, oh, I got to get that for Stefan, that type of thing. Um, when people know your passions and they understand what you're passionate about they, in a way, will search for you. Even if it's not an active thing, it's a passive thing, just as they're going along, realizing, wow, here's this thing I know this guy or, or girl wants, and it's hard to find, well, maybe I'll get it for them. And you do the same thing. It's important to reciprocate and spread that, that attention to what other people care about, because you can do the same thing and trade back and forth, and that's how collections can grow, is by letting people know what you're interested in and finding out what they're interested in, and maybe you kind of looking for stuff for them a lot of back and forth trading, you can really build a lot of your collection without spending a whole lot, just kind of trading between people, getting to know people. Last one, number five, sometimes spending more can actually save you more. 
When you are doing things like looking at eBay, finding big boxes of things at thrift stores, going around, uh, trading with certain people, yard sales, whatever, sometimes if you see giant lots or see big groups of things, even if you're not interested in everything in that lot, everything in that box, if, again, you know what you're doing, knowledge is power, you can make more off those lots sometimes. Not always. Don't go buying giant lots of like Sega Genesis sports games and like loose cartridges and thinking you're going to resell that and make you know, all your money back. Know what things are worth, know what people are looking for, and maybe there's only two games in the box of 20 that you want. You might be able to unload those other 18 and make your money back plus more. Frequently I have actually taken stuff and resold it or traded it and not only made my money back, but that right back into collecting and ended up getting four or five games I wanted pretty much for free. And really those are my five big tips. There's a lot you can do, but I really think just knowing what you're looking for, letting other people know what you're looking for, being patient and persistent, you can find a great deal every once in a while. You can build massive collections. I mean, we've added a couple hundred games to our collection in the past couple of years, and you know, we're I'm at almost 200 laser discs and CEDs, we're getting close to 3,000 books and manga. This giant shelf behind me here and here and all that, you know, loaded up here. We're not spending 10 bucks a piece on that type of thing. Honestly, it's very unusual for us to spend more than one $200 in an entire year. That's pretty unusual. It's usually there's like a, just a really big deal we can't pass up. But again, 100, 200 bucks a year at most, and you can build a giant collection that fills every wall of your apartment. So those are my five tips for collecting on the cheap. You can do it. Just again, be patient and take a little time to know what you're looking for. Here's a look at our new setup for the plushies. They weren't fitting in the other room, so we have them on top of some of the books here and manga. Pretty cool setup here. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have any other collecting tips or any really cool stories of stuff you've been able to pick up recently for crazy, crazy deals.